watching Fox 13. And the 11 o'clock news starts now. So they loved him. They loved his look. They cast typed him right away. They Dog fans should be starstruck by this Dalmatian. You will meet the pup from Florida who landed a big role in a major movie. We've really seen a rapid recovery in the last few months. The people are vaxxed and ready for a vacation, and it's a welcome boost in tourism for Tampa Bay. Everyone's super supportive of the city and the lightning, and we're just really excited to be in the playoffs again. Game one in the semifinals was a letdown for Bolts fans, but they aren't losing hope just yet. Good evening and welcome. I'm Lloyd Towers. And I'm Haley Hines. Thanks for being with us. Tonight, game one of the Stanley Cup semifinals kicked off at Amelie Arena. Nearly 15,000 fans were allowed in, and that is the most the arena has seen since the season began. Fox 13's Jordan Bowen has more from fans on the excitement surrounding game one. Unfortunately, Lightning fans aren't celebrating a win over New York. Tampa Bay comes up a goal short against the Islanders in game one. Kevin O'Donnell joins us now with a look at what went wrong for the Bolts in this semifinal opening game against the Islanders. Kevin. Well, Lloyd, uh, not much really went the Lightning's way. Uh, Lightning now find themselves in a position, well, that they haven't been during this year and during the playoffs. Uh, that's trailing in a series. The Bolts dropped game one to the Islanders, uh, not looking like the defending cup champs. A sense of urgency seemed to be missing. And overall, the Lightning's play it was pretty sloppy for their standards. Yeah, I hope they can bounce back once again. Kevin, thanks. New at 11. Business is booming at the airport. A record number of flights left airside sea at TPA this weekend. Fox 13's Justin Matthews shows us how the travel industry is rebounding quickly here in Tampa Bay. A man accused of leaving the scene of a deadly hit and run crash is in custody tonight. This crash happened just before 5 a.m. on the Selman Expressway in Hillsborough County near mile marker 11. State troopers say this man, Miguel Matias Usher, was driving when he veered into the wrong lane, hitting another car. The driver of that other car died. His passenger is in critical condition. Troopers say Usher ran from the scene of the crash, but they were able to track him down. Manatee County detectives are looking for a man who broke into Poppy's Place restaurant early this morning. It happened around 3 a.m. at the restaurant on US 301 in Ellington. The burglar was caught on surveillance camera. He broke through a glass door to get inside and then he made his way through the restaurant, prying open two doors and a register. Detectives say he got away with an undisclosed amount of cash. Search crews still have not been able to locate a man who jumped into the water off Apollo Beach to try and save a father and son. Their bodies have been recovered, but there is no sign of 27-year-old Christophe Marie. The man and child were swept away in the current Friday night at the Apollo Beach Preserve. Murray jumped in after them. His family says he is a good swimmer and they are hopeful he is okay. Some people who received the COVID-19 vaccine are coming down with a heart condition. Uh, who is being impacted and why doctors say the condition most likely won't force the CDC to put a pause on distribution next. And the casting to Cruella was spot on. A scout chose this Dalmatian from Florida to be in the movie. How he landed the role next. Hey, Tyler. Hey, guys. Uh, good evening. It's been uh, fairly quiet for the most part today. Aside from kind of splash and dash showers, it was certainly much more active over to our east and to our north. Got some storms on Sky Tower now. It looks like we're going to have more of them overnight. So you may get woken up by some thunder. We'll track where those storms are now coming up in just a few minutes. Yoga. I would say for the last 10 years has just been like my, the way I ground myself. I am just in the moment, I'm on my mat, and it, it's a beautiful feeling. It really helps me at work when there's multiple things going on, maybe we have breaking news. I've learned through yoga to just be present in the moment and relax. The great thing about Good Day, in addition to reporting the news and telling people, you know, the top stories, we get to show our personalities a little bit more. That allows you to know us better. The vaccine rollout in the U.S. is being credited for reducing cases, but now the CDC is focusing on a potential new side effect from mRNA vaccines. An unusual number of heart problems are being reported. But as Fox's Madeline Anderson shows us, some doctors say the benefits still outweigh the risks. 
A note from a Delta airline pilot is a surreal reminder of just how much and how long the pandemic impacted our lives because many thought it would only interfere with our lives for 14 days. And that turned into more than 14 months. On March 23rd, 2020, a Delta pilot parked his plane in a California lot since the pandemic was canceling hundreds of flights. Before he left the flight deck, he wrote this note saying in part, if you are here to pick it up, then the light must be at the end of the tunnel. Well, he was right. There is a light. He just anticipated the plane would be picked up two weeks later. Instead, the plane sat there for 435 days with that note serving as a time capsule until it was picked up this week. Wow. Yeah, I think a, a similar feeling for so many things, you know, hoping, thinking, oh, it could only last a couple of weeks. And, yeah. you know, here we are going into almost summer Went in on 2021. And Flew by. Hopefully yeah. seeing some light now, though, yes. at the end of the time. Yeah, ho hopefully, guys. Uh, some big boomers out there in spots tonight. I'm thinking we'll get more showers and storms popping up overnight. So good sleeping weather, depend on whether, you night, whether or not you like the rain. But uh, there'll be some showers and storms with some lightning and thunder overnight. You can bet that. Got a couple of them right now. I'll show you Sky Tower in just a second. Hot day today. How about 98 over in Lake Placid? Usually one of our hot spots over in Highlands County. It was pretty toasty out there early in the day. Got a few showers and storms earlier this morning, but it, it wasn't a whole lot. There was a ton of activity over towards Orlando and up as uh, far north as Ocala and Gainesville. Had some big storms, in fact, in, Cit in Citrus County this afternoon. So it was out there, just not so much around Tampa Bay this afternoon. So another steamy afternoon for sure. 77 over on Bayshore right now. And if I pan this camera over to the right, we looked kind of over McDill and out towards the port. You'd probably see a pretty good downpour if uh, we got some flashes of lightning in there, but it's uh, it's another muggy night with just popcorn showers and storms right now. Now, I, I do think we'll start to ramp up the coverage here overnight, so you may go to bed now. It's pretty quiet outside, but I think we'll have a decent coverage in your showers and storms, say 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, closer to daybreak tomorrow as well, so not winding things down for the night. Uh, look for more showers and storms to develop here uh, in the coming hours. Uh, watching the tropics closely this week, particularly the southwestern Gulf, this is something we've talked about for the better part of seven or ten days now. Uh, likely going to get uh, a tropical depression to form later this week. It's going to be slow to happen here, but as this kind of gradually moves north, there's not much to look at now, but just kind of a broad circulation here. As this gradually moves north, we'll probably see something try and spin up off the coast of Texas or Louisiana late this week into this weekend. Potential for some very heavy rainfall uh, somewhere from eastern Texas over into Mississippi. Still too far out to fine tune the details on that. The takeaway is I don't think this is an issue for us, but certainly something we're watching closely with a whole lot of moisture headed north. There could be several inches of rain in some places next weekend. So we'll be watching that again uh, as we go throughout this week. There you see it kind of spinning up just south of uh, coastal Texas late this week. 80 tonight, very muggy. Uh, coastal showers and storms will spread inland overnight. Scattered showers and storms tomorrow, particularly the first half of the day. Should be kind of quiet later in the afternoon. 89 for a high on Monday, and then kind of a repeat of that on Tuesday. 89, a whole lot of clouds around the next couple days as well. Boating forecast, breezy. West winds at 15 knots, some moderate chop in the bay. Next tide's going to be a low tide just before the top of the hour here. Here's your seven-day forecast. Rain chances pretty good uh, through about Wednesday, 50 to 60 percent. Then we quiet things down, kind of get it back to a typical pattern heading into Father's Day weekend. Hey, Kev. Hey, Tyler, the uh, not enough lightning today. That was the problem, I think. Uh, Islanders quickly show the lightning, though, that this series isn't going to be as easy as round one and two. Just too many turnovers by the lightning and a lack of real scoring chances led to the loss in game one of the semifinal series. Steven Stamkos, even off his game, we're going to hear from the team captain coming up next. Fox 13 News is brought to you by Mark Spain Real Estate. Get a guaranteed offer on your home today. Well, it's not the performance we've come to expect from the Stanley Cup champs. The Bolts' high-powered electric offense uh, lacked spark in Game 1 of this Final Four matchup. The Islanders had a lot to do with this, though. This team is a lot more physical with a tough defense to penetrate. They showed it today. It is Tuesday night, 8 o'clock inside Emily Arena, and Lightning really can't afford a repeat performance. They need to win Game yeah. 2. Uh, coming up in the second half hour, the Rays continue rolling as they sweep away the birds. We're going to have highlights and hear from Kevin Cash in about 25 minutes, guys. All right, Kevin, thanks. Thanks, Kevin. A hair-raising moment at the Westminster Dog Show this weekend when a dog's handler took a tumble. Check. Here we go with that speed again. Up and over, looking at that, looking at that camera and still running and staying clean. That was amazing. 
Get to the outside. Push, push, push. Get over there. Get over there. Oh, oh my goodness. You're fine. You're fine. Just yeah, tr uh, trainer Dan Hattie was able to get back up, as you see here, and complete the event with Ripple, who had been tearing up the course prior to the fall, but the handler was able to get back up and finish the competition. In the end, it was a border collie named Verb that posted the best score here. But that was a pretty good fall and a, and a get up and a, a comeback. Yeah, for good sure. recovery. Yeah. Points for that. A dog in Central Florida is a rising star in Hollywood. This Dalmatian in Orlando landed a, a role in the new Cruella movie. He got the eye of scouts from a production company and made an instant impression. In fact, he was cast almost immediately. Fox's Matt Trezza shows us how this top dog stardom began with a very humble start. Another reason to see Crew Alligan, yeah. because we know someone in the, in the <laughs> movie. Star. Ab absolutely. Well, uh, there's a new push for funding at NASA. And it comes as the agency prepares to send men and women back to Mars. We talked to NASA, administra Na NASA Administration Bill Nelson about NASA's plans in tonight's Money, Power, and Politics. And heated exchanges between Russian President Vladimir Putin and President Biden ahead of their sit-down. Why it's generating the most interest at the G7 summit. watching the Fox 13 11 o'clock news. NASA is planning for new missions, an expanded budget, and manned flights to the moon and Mars. It's also investigating the recent UFO sightings that have baffled military pilots. Craig Patrick sat down with NASA Administrator Bill Nelson for tonight's round of Money, Power, and Politics. President Biden is on the first international trip of his presidency, meeting with leaders from the group of seven countries. But for many people, the president's sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin next week in Geneva is generating the most interest. Fox's Greg Palcott has more tonight from Windsor, England. After more than 12 years, Israel now has a new prime minister. Naftali Bennett will lead the Jewish state and a newly formed coalition government. Today's vote ended a two-year cycle of political paralysis in which Israel held four deadlocked elections. President Biden was the first world leader to release a statement saying he congratulated the new leader along with Yair Lapid who will rotate in as prime minister in 2023. Representative Ilhan Omar is under fire for making controversial comments about the conflict between Israel and the Hamas. She claimed unthinkable atrocities were committed by the U.S., Israel, and the Hamas and other Middle Eastern countries. She walked back her comments. But as Mark Meredith reports, it wasn't enough to ease demands to get her removed from office. As House lawmakers return to Washington, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is dismissing reports her caucus is divided over U.S. support for Israel. The controversy comes after some comments recently made by Minnesota Congresswoman Ilan Omar. Some say Omar essentially equated the U.S. and Israel to terrorist groups like Hamas and the Taliban. She later walks some of her comments back, but it's done little to appease Republicans who argue Omar should lose her committee assignments. I think she absolutely should be fired. And this is a pattern with her, too. This isn't just a one-off. She has a pattern of anti-Semitic comments. She, she's constantly uh, trying to make you believe that America is a bad place, not worthy of our praise at all. While House Democratic leadership first criticized her remarks and called for clarification, those demands appear to have bothered other progressive members, including Rashida Tlaib, who tweeted last week, quote, Freedom of speech doesn't exist for Muslim women in Congress. The benefit of the doubt doesn't exist for Muslim women in Congress. House Democratic leadership should be ashamed of its relentless, exclusive tone policing of congressmen of color. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was asked about the dust-up. She says despite some heated moments last week that the party is moving forward. What I'm saying is, is end of subject. She clarified, we thanked her, end of subject. What other people go out and say is up to them, but it is... Uh, what we what happened is a reflection of the respect we have for our member. Other progressive lawmakers say the matter is over, but Republicans say it's far from over, as they claim increases in anti-Semitic attacks can be traced to such controversial comments. In Washington, Mark Meredith, Fox News. At least 12 people were killed and 39 seriously hurt after a gas line explosion tore through a residential neighborhood in central China. This blast sent more than 150 people to hospitals. It hit a crowded food market where customers were buying breakfast. The cause of that explosion still under investigation. 
A border patrol uncovers human smuggling in Texas. Agents say they discovered more than 100 illegal immigrants crammed inside a stash house near the Mexico border on Thursday. Border Patrol says they were all living in inhumane conditions. Video shows a messy house with bedding and blankets on the floor. Investigators say the immigrants were from several countries, including Mexico, El Salvador, and Honduras. Deputies come to the rescue after a woman gets pinned underneath her car. This happened in Pontiac, Michigan. Another driver hit the woman's vehicle. The woman who was not wearing her seatbelt was thrown and pinned underneath her car. Deputies couldn't wait for a wrecker, so they teamed up to lift the car and pull the woman from under it. She is listed in critical condition at the hospital. A two-year-old boy also in the car was properly restrained and not injured. Deputies did track down the driver who caused the crash and arrested him. Fans are mourning the loss of longtime actor Ned Beatty tonight. Family members tell TMZ he passed away in his sleep today from natural causes. Beatty's career spanned five decades with memorable roles like Rudy and Network. He was 83 years old. Well, they say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Up next, how this man is helping his local school by dumpster diving. Fox 13 Sky Tower Radar, the Bay Area's most trusted weather radar. For your chance to win mega amounts of my dollars, download the free Fox Bet Super 6 app today. Simply pick six race outcomes and you can win big for free. What's more American than NASCAR? Free money. That's what. When a retired Navy pilot in Virginia found out his neighborhood elementary school was struggling to get funding for its students, he became dedicated to solving that problem. And he just so happened to find the solution in trash bins. Fox photojournalist Ama Arthur Asma introduces you to a man on a recycling mission. All it takes is one person with an idea, and uh, he hopes to find volunteers and sponsors to help him raise more money for the schools. Wow, to have a supporter like that for your school. Well, a Canadian couple owns a home they never intended to buy all over a major mix-up. Claire Segarin and her boyfriend wanted to start a new life in Scotland, so they decided to purchase a home through an auction, but had a hard time understanding the auctioneer's thick accent. Sagarin was relying on the manual to guide him through the process. He ended up putting his hand up to bid and noticed no one else did. Turns out that's because he bid on the wrong house. What they purchased was a rundown home that was abandoned for more than 20 years. Good thing Sagarin's boyfriend is a carpenter. They decided to keep it and are now in the process of fully renovating that property. <laughs> Looks like they're off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you build it, they will come. Christina Van Zels shows us how a woman in Wisconsin started a chess club as a way to be social during the pandemic. What a neat idea really to is. get people together outside. Just get to maybe you learn a new skill, maybe you get better at it, but you make new friends. Ab absolutely. What a what a great way to get together. What yeah. a great game for that matter. Mm -hmm. Speaking of games, let's send it over to Kevin. Hey, Lloyd and uh, Haley. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, you know, it didn't celebrate that lightning win today, but across the bay, the Rays were lighting off some fireworks against the Orioles. The Rays sweep the series with Baltimore, and they are making this game look really easy. Randy Arozarena delivers the big blast. Uh, the Rays maintain their best record in baseball. We're going to hear from Kevin Cash coming up as the Rays head out of town for Chicago. This Flag Day, see how a local World War II vet helped put up some of our area's most iconic creations. We do put in a lot of flagpoles. Monday at 5. Where there is no cooling off this Rays team. Uh, this team is smoking hot right now. Tampa Bay sweeps the Orioles out of town. And get this, you know, since May 13th, a month ago, uh, the Rays have won 23 of 28 games, uh, outscoring their opponents by 86 runs. That is just simply amazing in Major League Baseball. The Rays uh, spot the O's a run, and well, they erase that lead in the third very quickly. And Chicago has the second best record in baseball. USF Bulls going to need a big comeback in this one, but hey, they've had one successful season, you know, picked yeah. last for their conference uh, to make it to the Super Regionals for the first time in school history. It's been a successful year already. Yeah, absolutely. Job well done for sure. Yeah. All right, Kevin, thanks. Okay. Well, you know what? The cicadas, they really bug people, but this guy is trying to attract cicadas. 
We'll explain why coming up next. Billionaire hedge fund founder Ray Dalio. I think the greatest tragedy of mankind is on the next In Depth with Graham Bensinger. This week, we spend the afternoon with billionaire Ray Dalio. The hedge fund titan opens up about game-changing ocean exploration. You're not going to see aliens in outer space. You're going to see aliens when you go under the sea. World leaders, you've met with Putin, and what did the two of you talk about? And life lessons. I think the greatest tragedy of mankind is... All that's coming up next, right here on In-Depth. Now, the cicadas are everywhere up north. They're hard to avoid, but this guy is actually trying to attract them, and it appears it's working. You see, he is covered with the insects. Jeff Gosling of Edgeward, Kentucky, discovered the flying bugs. They love the sound of the weed whacker, so he plays it for them, and uh, you can see what happens. <laughs> do, we, do we know why he wants to attract them? I I don't know if there's a because I can I, to this. I can do this. <laughs> just why because. You, why are you doing it exactly? Just because I can. They go, wow, it's a giant <laughs> cicada. Look at him. <laughs> That's terrifying. That's the guy down the street. You know yeah. that guy. <laughs> For more news, follow us on Twitter. And the news is always at fox13news.com. Good day starts at 4 a.m. Till then, have a great night.